All right, <laughs> maybe we won't finish off strong today. <laughs> um, let me go ahead and remove the banner if I can find it. Okay, cool. So my computer died. We're gonna do a, a lighter version of the stream for today um, because all of my prep work was on my desktop. So we'll do our best to finish it off. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure my graphic card uh, kicks the bucket. So my plural, sorry. It's a tad early. Um, so I'm noticing, uh, yeah, that's, hmm. I am not sure what we can do about that, but I will make sure to um, let people know on the MLH side and see Okay, cool. Way's already on it. So hopefully they'll get the check-in link figured out. Um, so no pressure if you can't check in, just like take a screenshot or something to prove that you're here. And hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm using AirPods. I don't like using these for streams, but uh, I, I'm on my laptop right now. <laughs> so um, that's better. Okay. Um, right, so last hack of Global Hack Week. Again, we'll be doing things a lot lighter today just because, uh, again, my lap, my desktop died. So nobody missed much, um, had a delayed start while I tried to get as much as I could back up here. I'm still pulling up our checklist document. Um, but if you were on today in Global Hack Week yesterday, you know that for today, we will be um, going and making, or starting at least, because um, we only have two hours. There's a lot I want to talk about, because um, there's stuff I don't completely know about. Um, so we'll explore together, but we are making a sticker catalog. And so the reason for that, once I find my checklist, is, there's my checklist. Um, the reason for that is I have way too many <laughs> stickers. Um, and while there's nothing wrong with having too many stickers, um, there's, there's a lot. And I showed some of them on stream. This is the side of my stickers. Um, I showed a bunch on stream. And so I've, I've put together my catalog for y'all, at least physically. Um, but it can be really hard to organize, see how much I have, especially when I go to sticker exchanges and um, find that I've collected more of things I already have because I have so many stickers, I don't know what I have or how much. Um, so there's definitely a few that I have too much of. Um, but I also thought it would be nice for those of you who collect things or who want to track things that this is a pretty similar structure that you can start off with. Um, and so to get started, let's go pull up my checklist uh, to share with you all. So that way you don't have to see my face on screen the whole time. Um, we don't we don't need to do that. Share screen. Can I just share a tab? Will it let me? No, because I need to open and confirm permissions. Hang on. Yeah, I don't use my laptop for streaming. Um, my laptop is a tad old. And I don't know. You know, it might actually make me restart my... Uh... Yeah, it's going to make me quit Chrome. <laughs> All righty. All right. We're not going to do that. And I'm just going to share the document link with everybody. And 
that that's how we're gonna make today happen. Um, at the very least, I can. Oh wait, no, it won't let me share my screen otherwise. Alrighty, well, we're gonna do another technical difficulty pause while I go restart Chrome or open Firefox to load the stream and then. <sighs> okay. Um. Cool. I will hopefully be back soon and it will not end the stream because I closed the tab. But it might because, okay, new plan. We're gonna use Firefox as my, do I have Firefox on this? Nope, I'm gonna go download Firefox then. <laughs> Let's go download Firefox. I mean, I have Safari. I guess I guess I can use Safari. Alrighty. Live time debugging. No biggie. Okay. But if I'm going to stream, I need to use Chrome. So I need to log into StreamYard on Safari. Oh my goodness. This is not what I expected to happen. Does StreamYard even work on Safari? I hope so. Just. Will it let me share a window? Oh, okay, it'll do that. Let's fiddle with things then. Let's let's see what we can. I'm, I'm trying to make it so I don't have to restart my Chrome because <laughs> if that's the case, we'll, I'll be back in about five, 10 minutes because I have a lot of tabs. Um, let's see, will you let me share? What was it that it didn't like? Oh, oh, is it because of, is it gonna let me? Is it gonna let me? Yeah, all right. It was because I had share audio on my tab. That's cool. Great, no Safari needed. All right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's salvage the stream, y'all. All right, so here's our checklist. Let me go ahead and zoom in for everybody. I'm not using my giant monitors, so hopefully it'll be a little easier to see, although it is a Mac, so who knows. All right, so once again, to give you context, um, because I am sharing from a tab, I won't be able to see the chat because I am working on one screen today. So um, I will do my best to check back. There will be those awkward pauses while I catch up, um, but definitely let me know in chat of any issues, things you suggest, et cetera, as always. Um, like I said, we're going to do our best to finish out strong, although the universe is saying no. <laughs> um, so as I was saying, the TLDR, I have a massive collection of stickers. Um, we'll, we'll spend some time today during the stream going through some of them just because like stickers are cute. I want to show them off. Um, but also I wanted to catalog them. And there's a couple different features I talked about yesterday. We're definitely not getting to frankly any of them um, because of what I really wanted to do was create just a starter tutorial on I want to upload images to S3, um, and then I want to upload some metadata to MongoDB, really get that skeleton down for anything else that would be a cataloging or image-based project, or even it doesn't have to be images. Um, you could actually use other links. You wouldn't even need to use S3 if you wanted to, um, with the intent being that you can fork the project or at least copy this like hour and a half session because uh, realistically it will be a little shorter um, given everything and that way you can go ahead and just kickstart whatever it is you're working on um, and have someone fumble through it for you basically um, which as I do in all my streams I don't always know what it is that I'm doing um, and I am here to learn on stream with you I know it is early slash late for a lot of people so it'll be pretty low viewership um, and I, again, would love interaction from y'all just to, to keep me going. And again, we're, we're just rounding out the last global half week. All right, so going back to our to-do. So there's a couple things I did as prep work prior where I was figuring out like, well, okay, I wanna host images, like where do I do that? And that could be Google Photos, it could be um, Apple Photos, et cetera. But then the next question to consider is, well, I want to access a permanent or potentially temporary link or find some way of just caching all the images and bringing it down to whatever I end up making. So think of things like, oops, that was, there we go. I am now on the right window. Um, think of things like Imgur, um, where they're already hosting images for you, et cetera. And there are these links that you can share with people. 
but I really wanted to use some, like a cloud-based thing. I mean, we are in Global Hack Week Cloud. Um, and so I was thinking about things like Azure and S3 with Amazon, with AWS and Firebase with Google. There's a lot of different ways you can host data. And because I'm using image data, that's a little harder because the reality is I don't wanna give people access to my Google Photos. That's not a really good idea privacy-wise. Um, I don't use Apple Photos. And so right off the bat, choosing Google Photos as my like main point of entry isn't really accessible to those who have other ecosystems. Um, for, for me, I use both Google and Apple. I use like Windows machines and Mac machines. So I'm pretty all over the place. Knowing that I wanna be able to access things from wherever I end up being, whether it's my phone, my laptop, my iPad, my desktop, you name it. Um, and I realize that I have a lot of tech now. <laughs> None of which is going to help me right now. <laughs> um, my desktop is dead. So that's a, whoops. That is a, that's going to be my day after this, fixing my computer and hoping I don't have to buy a new graphics card. But I think I might have to. Oh, oh, oh boy. Anyway, so um, for proof of concept, I don't actually have 50 stickers. Um, we're actually going to do the downsizing um, on stream because I didn't get a chance to do that. I'm in the height of my dissertation, so I am a tiny bit busier than usual, and by that I mean a lot. Um, and so again, I wanted this to be a skeleton for any type of cataloging you might do, um, because there's more than just stickers that I do slash want to potentially host. Um, and so for the sticker functionality, I have plenty of ideas here and lots of questions about it, and we can talk more about it. And then as far as, like I said, cataloging or accessing images, I just wanted to proof of concept that like, is it reasonable? Should I be using S3? Could I be using Firebase? Could I be using something else? Um, and I did find something called Cloudinary, which apparently adds like computer vision on top and not computer vision, but a form of it where it does image processing. Um, and a couple other things where you can have more information about the image. Um, it will, oh, excuse me, um, offload some of the possible actions we might be interested in for long-term things. And so it can be used in conjunction with S3, which is another reason why I'm mentioning it, especially if that's something that you want. The downside to all of these solutions so far is that you have to pay. And that is the way that cloud is today. And I will mention that I have very limited knowledge of cloud. Um, I didn't take those classes when I was an undergrad and I never got a chance to really catch up on it. Um, I'm pretty sure, slash at least I hope, Cloud is being definitely covered in, in school now, but you never know. And so, like I said, if you know more, definitely, definitely help me out because I am I'm on the struggle bus today. But moving on, we're getting to my favorite part of every project that I happen to do these days, which is the database part. Um, databases come a lot easier to me these days, which is hilarious because I did not do databases or cloud or anything web when I was an undergrad. Um, I was a hardware and video game like focus uh, engineer. So when I was doing computing and everything, I was fixated on like low level hardware, microcontrollers, and then of course like video game architecture. So I was more just in like shaders or all these things. So this is why we're doing these web-based things that I seem a little behind on compared to my peers. Totally fine. Again, this is a learning process. And so with databases, that's actually something that I've worked with a lot. I work with a lot of data, um, not because of my PhD, but because of past opportunities. Opportunities, oh my goodness, it is early today. <laughs> wake up at six expecting your computer to work. Anyway, I'll stop joking, I should let it go. But as far as cataloging information, what do I want to know about the stickers that I've collected? And so putting myself in this brain space means that there's at least a couple of things that I might be curious about. From where I got it, what it came from, when I got it, if I happen to know, um, when it is that I put it in my system, how many I have, I definitely wanna know that. And then maybe I might personally want to rate the design, the sticker quality, especially like the physical feel, because there are some stickers that are really thin um, and there are some stickers that have that like good, soft, thick feel, you know, um, that just like are good quality from the die cut like side of things. But not all stickers are made equal, um, which means that sometimes I'm like, mm, bad feel sticker, but it's cute. So different things. And then sometimes I might actually know who it is that they, that whoever it is printed the sticker, who they used as their vendor um, to actually print them to do the die cut, et cetera. Um, so I know that Sticker Mule is one of them. Um, MLH has been using um, someone else these days, which I'm totally blanking on for right now. But again, it is 7 a.m. and I woke up like 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago, maybe five minutes ago, um, maybe an hour ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It'd be like that. 
Um, it may not be a quick fix. I do everything on cloud anyway on Drive. So we'll see how it goes. The good news is I didn't lose my, oh God, I can't check my hard drive. Okay, um, yeah, we'll see how today goes. Anyway. Oh yes, standout stickers, thank you very much. Um, that is exactly what MLH has been using these days. Um, and so a lot of hackathon partners are also using that. Um, here's a question. I realized that no one told me that I wasn't streaming the checklist. Alas. All right, now that everyone can be on the same page, let me scroll up. Right, so here's my pre-workshop to do <laughs> the, the what I've been reading off of and looking at. Um, I just love to hear me talk. I don't like hearing just me talk. Um, anyway, anyway, so like I said, we were going through cataloging information. So some of these things are things that you would use to create your schema. And the reason I went instead of using a normal SQL database where it's structured and you always have your cells, I was like, well, one, I haven't actually done a NoSQL database. I've usually done SQLite or PostgreSQL. Um, but again, I wanted to learn something new. And so a few weeks ago, I was actually teaching myself Mongo because I'm like, I should know how to use NoSQL. Databases are pretty easy. You should be transferable. It's just like a different approach to databases. And the more I got into it, the more I'm like, oh, this would solve all of my development problems at the moment where I, anytime I'm using a database, I keep having to go back and make edits and remake the database and re-upload data and stuff. So if I'm using anything more than like five entries, it, it's very tedious. And you've probably seen that from my past streams from the Shark Tracker, um, especially where I just kept editing the database and kept remaking it. With Mongo, I don't have to do that. And so if you happen to attend the Mongo streams this week, I unfortunately did not have time. Um, but I'm pretty sure y'all covered like the versatility of it, different use cases, and how it might best help your developer practices. And so with that in mind, I'm like, this, this cataloging information is subject to change. Some things may be required. Some things may not be required, but on top of that, there are things I just may not know about something, whether it's when I got it, because I have so many stickers, I'm like, uh, I don't actually know when I got it. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and I may not even know like the event or company name, where it might have just been a sticker exchange and I just happened to get extras for an event I never made it to, um, even though I may have wanted to go. Um, and this last one is actually the most important, which is getting a URL to the hosted image. The reason I'm not just straight up using Mongo as my, let me go upload my photos to it. And I'm not actually creating a database in this three bucket, but I will be through Mongo and that's a whole other, we'll, we'll get to that part of the discussion. Um, I really wanted to make sure that I kept Mongo as lightweight as possible, um, being that it only really held text where I just would know like, this is the URL to access this image when I want it specifically. Um, but I mean, that always need that depending on how I go about making this project, where I might just be like, okay, download all the images at once, cache it in a user system. But that can be pretty pricey, both in terms of download from whatever cloud um, system you're using, but also in terms of space. So putting things in someone's cache, especially if they have a bajillion tabs open, bye, um, means that they may not want that. And so you might instead cache like a section of them at a time or, put it in a CDN, um, like Cloudflare, Cloudflare um, or other services. There's a number of different ways to access these things. And I know that S3, or at least AWS, has um, a lot of internal stuff like ECS, I think is the thing that maybe might be something to consider, that if I deploy this um, in an S3 bucket, that I would be able to access another bucket from within the ecosystem that is AWS. And I'm pretty sure if I do that, I don't have to pay for get, up, get like requests. Uh, because that's a downside to S3 that I found, which is that in order to get objects from a bucket, I have to pay for it based on how many calls I make. And I don't like paying for things. I, I am frugal and, and cheap, so. Great question. Um, it is hosted, so you don't need to set it up locally, but I am old school and I love local instances. So that way I don't basically break a public facing database prod. Like I, I, I did have a good education. Um, don't break prod <laughs> is the mindset that I have. And so because of that, I'm like, always do things locally and then just plop it into a cloud-based thing. Then I'll then pay for any services or anything while it's being used. But 
Um, MongoDB is super useful. Atlas is um, the cloud-based like access to MongoDB plus a lot of other features. Um, so definitely very useful, highly recommend. And you're right, photos, let's come back to this one. Photos are definitely gonna take a lot of space in the database, which is why I separated it from Mongo where I'm keeping Mongo super lightweight because there is a document size limit of like 50, 16 bytes, 16 bytes. A document or at least an entry in a database can only be so big. Um, and so pictures could very easily go way overboard, especially when you consider the high quality photos people get with their iPhones and their Google Pixels and the Samsung, uh, uh, what's the Samsung phone, Galaxies? No, is that the tablet? I don't use Samsung, so I, yeah. The point is phones, the flagship phones these days have high quality photos and you can downsize them, which is what we're actually going to be doing um, as a way to manage that. And so this is also why I'm separating it, putting it in S3, because S3 was among the lowest. It wasn't like the lowest, but it was the one that I'm like, I don't know anything about it. I should go learn um, with the intent of trying to be like, how small do I make these photos that they are still reasonable for a web application or a, um, a mobile app or anything. So that way the download cost is lower. The storage cost is lower. Um, I mean, I, I pay for get requests specifically. I'm not sure that the size matters, but I'm pretty sure it might. But also I'm paying for space in a user's um, cache. So with that, all the photos that I've collected and taken pictures of, I've taken high quality photos of using my phone. Because like, if I happen to use like a professional camera, that photo would probably be even larger due to the raw data and all the extra information. So depending on who it comes from, where it comes from, that determines the size of the image and they can vary pretty widely. And Cloudflare does look promising, but again, it was pretty pricey. And to be honest, Cloudflare, I I like it as a CDN, um, but I do know that recently it's been down a lot more. Um, and it is a very public front facing common thing people use as far as CDNs. And the issue that I ran into was actually that it was really hard to get it. I could get the price point comparison between that and like storing things in S3 because I think they have like, I forget the exact uh, branding of it, but I was like, yes, it's cheaper. But I was having a lot of issue finding where it was in their pricing plan overall. Like when I went to go to look, look at their pricing plan, I was like, where? Where is this? Like, is this a subset of something that I have to pay in addition to? So not only would I be paying access to this one like Cloudflare thing, I'd also be paying for whatever is part of that surface. And then I figured with S3, it would be a little easier to just be like, well, I just want the bucket and I want the images and then done. Um, cool. So let's keep going. I know I'm definitely spending time explaining it, but I'm, my hope is that it will suit any possible use case of cataloging or storing images that y'all can just run off and just make the front end do whatever else. Um, and, and this is just the cloud-based part of it, um, which again, is mostly me learning about it. Um, so here's the thing to think about, which is that I, again, don't have context about cloud. I don't know if the URLs stored in an S3 bucket are publicly visible. I can make them publicly visible, I found out last night. Um, and there's two types of, of links where one is like a, basically a permanent link, um, which means anyone can access it, um, but I can restrict from what IPs or URLs it's being accessed from. Um, people can always like, you know, falsify some information and spoof and be me, so to speak. Um, but another thing is like, maybe I could create a hash in like MongoDB or otherwise to like really encrypt this URL. So that way it's a little harder to get to. Um, because the whole goal is not to make it so hard that I can't do anything about it, but to make it just a tad more difficult for the protection of my wallet. Um, yeah. And so with IDs, I was thinking like, oh, I could make unique things. And I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to let MongoDB make the IDs. Um, and then I, I also wanted to set up a local host. I probably want for the case of um, the fact that my desktop died. Um, and I don't have anything set up on this laptop, so we are definitely going to be uh, going up via Atlas. Um, also because like, I already have a cluster set up, and that was because I was running through their tutorials, so it's free. Um, and it's pretty lightweight what we're doing. Like I said, we're only adding text. All right, let's get into the really fun part, which is the features that I want. Um, for my needs, I really, really want this to um, be able to add new stickers where 
I'm at a sticker exchange, I'm at a new event, I'm coaching at an event, and I'm like, oh, gee, cute stickers. Let me quickly scan them in, like get it in, done, call it good. Instead of having to go home, take a while to unpack, find the stickers in the wash, I've done that. That sucks. <laughs> it sucks so much. Find the stickers in the wash, find them bent and crumpled from my travels, like getting all like no longer pristine. I do my best to conserve to like preserve them, put them in like a book I bought or my iPad or something, but like stuff happens on the road and the plane. Stuff happens. And I'm like, if I could just like scan it in while they're beautiful, like that'd be great. Um by the same token, what if I happen to acquire more because I make poor decisions sometimes, um, then I would want to be able to update things. Or what if I put information wrong while I'm at an event that I that I would get something like the sticker. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm getting the next year's stickers or something. I've just realized like I put the wrong year in for something. Can I like edit it by a mobile or web? Um, eventually, I would really love to do a computer vision um, based approach where given enough like the stickers in the database, being able to identify, hey, is the sticker from a specific event? Do I have this sticker where I don't have to go searching based on existing information from the MongoDB side of it, but just from having trained a, a, a tiny model or something like that? The thing is, I need a lot of images for that. And I'm just not there yet. It's just not. Um, this is actually a little secret project. Maybe I'll talk about it in the future. But um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Secret, secret projects. Um, and again, based on the fact that I'm wanting to add stickers via mobile or up update information in my web, then clearly I want to have a mobile slash web app to access this application. And again, we are not doing these today, but these are more things about ways in which you could integrate this like image storing process to whatever your own pipeline would be. Eventually, I would love to have others be able to either A, make their own brand new catalog with their own photos, or if they happen to have share information, like maybe they've gone to Sunhacks, which is the event that I help run out of here. Um, maybe then they can be like, oh, pull the existing photos and store it in my stuff. Um, there is not really a way to prevent people from editing global entries though. And so that's just a, like a way off future thing. Um, and a lot of these, the reason I'm like writing and sharing these features is again, this is open source. I want people to do whatever, but also I, I really want to make sure that when you're going through the project, like, okay, this is my degree, planning. <laughs> my degree is planning projects. Um, so thinking of different features as I as a user might want, or me as an admin, or me as a developer might want are important. This is requirements elicitation. Note, notably, I am not writing these the way I should be if I were to write a formal requirements document. But I, I'm at least thinking of the before. You first need to do feature to figure out what the features are, to figure out what you want in order to write the requirements so that way you can work toward achieving, completing, or ensuring that those requirements are met, um, however possible. Um, cool. So we're pretty much done with features. Um, like, yeah, I would love for people to like be able to host their own version of this or something. But I think at the end of the day, it's just going to be follow this tutorial, hopefully, if this becomes a tutorial or just like watch someone fumble around and then go find someone else. Um, all possible. Right. So again, this is only a two hour workshop. We are at the like 40 ish minute mark. And so again, a lot of context. If you've been to my streams, you expect this, I feel like. Um, and again, we are focusing on proof of concept. And so I do actually have an Amazon an AWS account already set up. Um, I realized I didn't want to do that on the stream. I'm really glad I already did that because that means I don't we're not sitting here for another 10, 20 minutes while I read things and go, what is AWS? Um, turns out I already had an account. Can't remember the last time I did it. Um, and then also, like I said, I already have a MongoDB account and I already have a cluster set up. So though I would love to go over it, it just doesn't make sense, especially knowing that people already talked about Mongo this week. Um, so definitely check out those. But also with S3, it M AWS seems to have a setup. It's just search bucket and then make bucket. I mean, we are going to make the bucket and do that part of things. And then we'll do um, the download of the images that I've already taken and set up. Um, we did talk about our schema, um, or at least tentatively enough to kind of get an idea of like, what's some information? Um, but I do want to make a note that we will come back to is that we should talk about accessibility. 
and we should figure out is there anything so i firmly believe that when you are making things accessible that it should be a forethought and not an afterthought and i'm bringing this back because we are at the end of the year and what a great time to reflect on the projects that we've done together or if you're happening to rejoin the projects you're going to hear about for the first time um, that you may consider checking out or don't frankly don't don't look at my old streams don't, don't look at we're gonna reflect and because it's the end of the year we, we got to do our, our new year's reflection make new promises for the new year all that kind of stuff and so with accessibility we haven't started coding anything so right now it is still a forethought and i really want to make sure that we're thinking about some of the things we could add at the start so that way when we're already developing we're already knowing that we're including people it's not the end all be all we're not going to catch everything um accessibility development is hard in that sense um you don't know what you don't know but we'll come back to that and um, yeah, cool. So let's go ahead and stop sharing that. Let me open up S3 so that way we can jump into that. Again, I am. Sign in because I signed in on my desktop. Maybe I should just. Cycle. Sorry, I'm still mentally like debugging my desktop. Like, do I need to power cycle it? Like, I turned the power off. Like, I haven't unplugged it, so there's still power running to it. Like, yeah. So the hardware side of me is like, mm, what do I do? How do I? Yeah. Never a dull day. Oh, Monday, no less. Oof. All right. While well, I set up any, um, let's see, any new chats. Hello. Go to go to exam prep. That's way more important. Hey, exactly. You definitely need all text. This is exactly what I was thinking about when I was like accessibility fields, and I'm like, we gotta do all all text. Um, ooh, fig captions. What are fig captions? I have not heard of those. Um, is it just another? Is it all text, or is this another way of um? providing alternative text in, in depending on code or I have not heard of this. I'm going to leave that while I go continue logging in. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. And then I need to zoom in and I will do that shortly. Do I need anything else? I need to log into Mongo. So let me go ahead and pull up Mongo. Mongo. And again, because of all the technical difficulties, this is even more lightweight than I had originally intended, um, which we would go into a lot more detail. But my little laptop is trying, and I have way too many tabs open. <laughs> and so it is trying. It is trying. All right, signing in. GitHub. Mm -hmm. I don't know my passwords. Yep, that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Oh, I forgot I have. I need authentication. Mm -hmm. Thank you for restarting. All right. Is that everything we need login wise? Do, 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 do. Okay, so fig captions are captions under the images instead of in the code or behind the image. Hmm. So that's a question. Can you do both then? Where you would have alt text, which is usually um like when you hover over an image or when an image doesn't load for the rest of the people on stream, I know you know, um, or I'm assuming you know, and then, cause you're telling me what fig captions are, um, and then additional captions on the bottom. I feel like you should be able to do both, but in terms of accessibility, my understanding is that you should not have duplicated information like in the link and then colon, and then you put the link, which is not helpful because they could just have an, a hypertext uh, embedded thing. That's exactly what I was asking about, excellent. 
All right, we are on, on the same track. Okay, so to clarify for people who are not familiar with accessibility, um, which I'm really glad we get to have this conversation, um, we'll touch on some other things that I've talked about in the past, but accessibility is one of the ones that I really wanted to go over first, because um, I think it was actually the first project I did, maybe, I can't remember. Um, but when you are doing accessibility work, you wanna make sure that you're not duplicating information because screen readers will read both of them. And, and so what that means is for those who, of us who have sight, who are um, trying to, sorry, catching up on chat as well. Um, for those who, of us with, with sight, it's like seeing the same text twice, or it's for screen readers hearing the same text twice, which frankly is a waste of time. It's a waste of processing energy um, in the sense of like, well, this could have been done better. And so that's why it's really important to be familiar with either ARIA labels or an ARIA, et cetera, um, which allows for screen readers to like identify things and also just having accessible websites, sign, phone design, et cetera, that is considerate of the fact that there are different ways people interact with um, media, basically. Um, not a great explanation, again, it's very early, but at least putting putting the seeds in your head of like, what does that mean? And what do I need to search to fill that gap? Because I know that some of you don't know this. And so when you don't know what you don't know, you don't know to go look it up until you actually have the thought of like, well, I actually don't know about that. Um, if you are on YouTube, you can see captioning. Um, unfortunately, Twitch and the way that this is all set up streaming wise, this doesn't enable that. Now, if you had gone to Sunhacks, we would have captions on Twitch because we add our captions ahead of time. Good point. Um, yes, so this is why I wanted to separate images and um, the rest of the information in Mongo. Again, keeping Mongo lightweight, but the alt text would already be in there. So when Mongo is pulled, um like as far as like an entry there then we get all the information that we would that's only plain text basically including a url to our image or some other way of accessing it um whether it's an id or however we want to eventually do that and that can vary from person to person hello we have some people who are dropping in dropping out and let me go back i have qualms with this question it is not fair some people are like either or like no, it's good. No, no, sorry. JavaScript. Oh my gosh, that's so early. <laughs> um, I personally am of the mindset when it came, well, I took a language paradigms class um, when I was in grad school or for engineering software. Um, and so I have never really formally aligned with a language. I firmly believe that their languages are built to serve a specific purpose, whether it's that a previous language wasn't sufficient or that a like an incoming language is um, like needing a new need, say again, cloud, web. Um, and so I feel like I have a favorite language for specific things. Like if I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do streams of data, I actually start with Java just because I'm familiar with it. It's not my favorite thing to do with it, but I know that it's pretty good at handling like streaming between servers. Like, Java is pretty reasonable as far as server architecture goes. Not everybody likes to hear that Java can be useful, but Java can be useful. Um, C is great for hardware. I always use C for hardware because I, I would never dream of using Python, even though I know it makes it more accessible for people um, as far as like knowledge and like integrating and figuring out what you need. But sometimes just having low level is great. Um, for web stuff, I definitely prefer actually TypeScript uh, because I have come from a typed language learning the uh, like classroom setting and like generally. So the answer is it depends. Yeah, anyway, let's see, uh, no new chats, but again, this is a very low key stream. Thanks for staying on, no pressure if you have to drop off. We are very proof of consenting this. Um, but the good news is everything is loaded. Let me double check on connect. Oh no, I don't wanna do that. I just wanna show me. My connections. Connections. Show me. Pause. I, yeah, I just want to. Yeah, that. There we go. Take a minute. Okay. That is prepped. Um, is S3 prepped? That is not. Yep. All right. Let's do this. So let's go ahead and stop sharing. 
And we're going to go ahead and present our next tab, um, which is S3. And then I need to go zoom in, make sure everybody can see it. Um, Oof, this is not friendly. Um, right, so I, so as I said, I already have AWS accounts set up. I was testing some stuff and made a new bucket. So for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new bucket and we're going to add images to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump over to MongoDB, set up a new collection. So I have that, but I'm not gonna switch over yet. Don't wanna make people just get confused. Um, set up a new collection in a sample cluster that I already have up from when I was doing tutorials to learn about Mongo. Um, and then actually set up our schema so that way we can start putting in some, some data. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about if we wanted to um, go further from that. And that should pretty much take us to about 40 minutes from now, which I think is a good time to end. Um, let you all take a break before closing ceremony. And again, thank you for sticking with me throughout the technical difficulties. I drastically had to reduce the scope of this workshop because of everything that happened this morning. Um, so I know it's not as fulfilling as it might have been, but I appreciate the patience nonetheless. Um, great. So I already actually have, like I said, a test. Um, I'm doing a separate project just for cataloging that's actually very similar, um, which is that I knit and crochet and do a bunch of different crafts. So I also want to store images of things that I've done so that way I can put a portfolio together. Um, I unfortunately do not have great stock photos. We are obviously not using that one. I could put nice sticker photos and everything. Um, oh, that's actually something I forgot. Photos. Uh, I need to pull up the stickers. Oh, right. I also said we'd go through some stickers. So maybe maybe in the time that's remaining, we, we can have a good time and go through some of my old stickers. Um, I, I have, I showed some on stream yesterday. I can show them again. I also have another bag I did not show, which has my non-hackathon stickers. So I have hackathon bag, non-hackathon bag, demo stickers, which is completely separate, and then a lot of other etc. So y'all can choose what stickers you'd be interested in seeing. Well, uh, as something to look forward to, your, your demo sticker for the end of the stream, so to speak. Well, let's go ahead and create that bucket. All right, so I'm not changing the AWS region. I don't really need to. Um, and generally when you create a bucket, from what I understand, again, I am very new to this. Uh, my first bucket was literally yesterday. Um, it just makes, like for the names, you need to make sure that it's unique, not for your projects, but globally, which I found fascinating that I could actually make a bucket. Um, but we're gonna name it StickersDB, see if it's open. Adding in that dash because, you know, gotta make sure you can read it. Um, I am not gonna copy any settings from an existing bucket just because I don't know what I'm doing. And I also, didn't really change anything in the last one. But there's a lot of things to think about when you're making an S3 bucket. And anytime you're working with cloud, which is that you, and this is from a le very limited knowledge base. This is literally using logic to constrain what I'm doing and to understand, like in, again, learn with y'all. Um, and so, which is that you wanna consider privacy. You wanna consider who can access things and why someone should access things. You should think of things as like a permission scope. And so you'll hear things like IAMs and whatnot, which is basically like, I think identity access manager, if I remember correctly. I did take like a few tutorials like ages ago. It, it's probably out of date, things change so much. Um, but you might have your admin who has access to all things, much like you would in like a Linux um, folder system or file system, command line, et cetera. As a root admin, you have access to everything, which can be dangerous. And so it's generally advised that root users have to be logged into. So you have additional tracking of like who became root user at this time. Um, and so you might have a next structure where you have your admin users who might be able to access root um, and like add act as root temporarily and then come back to their original things, which has another set of permissions that trickle down. And as you go through your hierarchy, you have people with less and less permission, less, less viewership basically of the things beneath them. And so if you consider this, it basically, shortens or thins the scope of which somebody can do something. And with cloud, I'm pretty sure it's the same in that you want to make sure that certain people can only access certain things, which is to say, for my photos, for example, maybe I don't want anything visible outside the bucket. I would make sure, and this is what we're going to do for today, we're going to make it completely public. 
And that's what these are talking about, these ACLs, access control lists, um, which is that um, I don't really need additional access. I don't need additional ownership. I don't need to transfer anything to anyone. So we're not going to enable ACLs for right now. Um, but there might be additional applications. So remember that hierarchy of like things I just talked about where you have root on top, admin, and then subsequent users. Um, programs and software can also be users. They are accessors to um, library softwares, uh, pipelines, um, Lambda, like shell scripts, it's, you name it, there's probably a program that can do it, like an automated process. And so you need to give people access for that. And then let me double check chat. Let's see. We can talk about this later. I have no idea what this is, but I would like to know later. Okay, so we have a vote for demo stickers. I did design a sticker. There's two in there. Um, did I design any others? No, because I'm really bad at actually, it's not that I'm bad at design, I'm actually okay at design. Um, it's that I'm really bad at following through and buying things because I don't wanna spend money. This is a recurring issue. I just don't wanna spend money. And so I'll, I'll have things staged and whatnot, I know I won't do it. Um, uh, let's come back to this one too. I've always had a guitar. I'm actually looking at buying another one, which is expensive. Although if I had to replace my graphics card, I'm not buying a guitar. Uh, I, I only play acoustic right now and I really want to learn electric. Um, so I have an amp in the mail, I'm really excited. Um, but as far as learning, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Remind me. Anyway, coming back to what we were doing, I didn't share the screen again. Y'all are not telling me I'm not showing the screen. <laughs> I need you all to tell me I'm not sharing the screen. Let's go back. Okay, coming back. This is this is when you create a bucket in AWS. <laughs> I think I think the world is saying no today. And I'm not picking up the phone. Clearly. <laughs> Right, so we named it Stickers DB. I don't actually know if this is going to follow through. Um, if you're not familiar with bucket naming, it's a little bit like variables from reading this document. Um, very important that you do. Um, there's also a few keywords that you shouldn't use, but again, much like variables, don't use keywords. Um, I think you're supposed to, you variables, you can't start with a number, but I think you can with buckets. Um, and then it should just include normal characters. Normal as in like uh, not special character. This is not a good way of describing it. All right. Like I said, I didn't choose anything from an existing bucket. I didn't know what I was doing last time I made a bucket. This time I have a little more knowledge. As far as object ownership, again, we are making it all the recommended stuff just because there's no other AWS account. There's no programs to add yet. There's nothing else, but we can change it later. So for now, nothing. And finally, the important part, the public access part, which is, sorry, I was double checking the chat. Um, that we want to if 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 later on or even in the setup now we wanted to make certain things accessible this is where again that hierarchy of access happens that hierarchy of permissions read and write are the most common things you can sometimes edit which is still like a read operation read and it's a read operation um like update i guess is a better way to put it um where you are changing existing things adding new rules and so I think across most cloud um, systems or SaaS service. No, it's software as a service. Right. I'm not going to talk about what I don't know. Don't, don't need to put misinformation in the world. The point is, we're not going to have public access, but we are going to talk about each of them. So, with blocking public access to buckets and objects through new access control lists, um, let me read to make sure I understand. I should supply it. I feel like I'm reading this like, like a REST API where you have um, like cr create or post um, where you or update basically where you're changing things or adding new things. And then you of course have like get. And so maybe we're not gonna go through this. This is like a 20 minute conversation that I didn't read about. Appointment. We're not gonna read about, it. we're just gonna create a bucket. The world is saying no, and I got to pick up at some point. We're not having versioning. All we're doing is uploading images. We don't need versions. 
Um, and no one's gonna have edit access either. So we won't need versioning still because there's only one user, admin high, um, or root at times, I guess. Um, and then if I had like a bajillion buckets, I would use tags, but I, I don't. And so we're gonna keep the default encryption, encryption the same because there only are images. So here's something that I did not mention. The photos that I am downloading do not have metadata cleared for geographic information, date, et cetera, which can be a privacy problem. So when you upload your images, see that you can remove that data, that metadata from the image to preserve your privacy. That's something that's not talked about when you're working with data. Clean it before you make it public. Alrighty, um, we're skipping advanced settings because I, we don't need to do much. Um, right. And we are at the hour mark, so I want to hurry up and get the last three hour stickers DB. I'm actually amazed that stickers DB exists because craft buckets did not exist. That was not allowed. All right, so if I were to upload images, um, I don't have them right now. I need to go download them. But I do want to show you the photos that I took because it's all MLH legacy. Um, actually, why don't we not? No, let's take a break for images. Let's let's do the stickers. Sticker time. Okay, let's try again. And this time, I'm actually going to share my screen and actually going to add it. <laughs> okay, because I okay. That's why I didn't realize it's because I hit share and then I forget to add to stage. There we go. All right. And let's zoom in. Everyone can read. There we go. OK, so this is the sample cluster, um, which if you have the GitHub education pack, I highly recommend um, going through and accessing MongoDB. You have access to your free cluster and also all of their like MongoDB school or like courses or whatever, which is how I've actually been teaching myself Mongo, um, because I also have education pack access um, and it's really nice so far. And they're they're pretty good at their instructions. Um, it's been it's easy. It's been easy for me to understand, but again, for context, I already know about databases. All right, so we already have these sample collections um, or databases, and we're just gonna make a new database. So sticker, um, yeah. Because let me cancel. So the way Mongo works again, if you were at the MongoDB talks this past week, just like tune out for two minutes. Um, if you're not, we're gonna quickly run through it. If you are not familiar with databases understand database as a, a collection of data, but it's sorted into tables where you might have like a cluster of information that is related, categorical information, qualitative, quantitative, et cetera. That is all clustered into one table and a database has many tables, um, but it's all related on the topic. So you might have a book database that has say a table for like book metadata versus author metadata. Um, and so those are two separate um, tables. So with Mongo, you will have your cluster, which can have many databases, which can have many collections. And those collections are basically tables. Um, so in this case, we need a new database because it doesn't really fit under any of these other. And so if you were tuning out, tune back in. Um, we need a, deba a new database to um, consider our, um, let's see, make sure. Do we need additional? We don't need any of these um, and we're not going to talk about it today um, just because it's, it's not relevant for right now. And I can talk for ages, but I actually don't know how to talk much about them and I would encourage you to Google it. Um, but so we're making a sticker database. Um, generally, when you are like a naming convention for SQL databases is that you have like an overarching theme, in our case, stickers. Um, so we might, and I, I don't want to put like sticker database or sticker collection. Um, just because that's kind of misleading a little bit. Like I could say sticker database, but it's like ATM machine. It's redundant because it's automated teller machine, machine, stuff like that. So we're just naming it sticker. Um, might do plural just because stickers are quite a few. And as far as collection name, we really only have one collection because going back to, and I know I can't share the tab this time. I actually remember to share this. Yes, I did share this again. Okay, good. Um, Going back to what I can't share right now, which is the cataloging information, um, there might be stuff we could split up, but we can change it at really any point. So for right now, we're going to keep it all in one collection. 
and we'll just call it metadata for now. And again, we can rename it, we can change it. All right, so with metadata, we can now add um, the documents, we can actually change the fields. And so um, let's see what I want to do. I want to, not to, and so, come on, let me, let me remember how to do this. <laughs> Let me structure a collection. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's just, yeah. So if I wanted to add a new piece of information, I don't actually have to define a schema like I should. And there's ways to do that where you can set um, like a limitation or a container or required things. But the thing about MongoDB is that there's no structure. It's expected that you relatively are similar and hopefully are, but for now, it's expecting, it just, it's generated an ID for me um, because Mongo does that. And it, I can just put in the key myself, I can put in the data. And so we're gonna pick a sticker. Um, what do I first have? Um, we're also gonna do that, that alt text. And we're only gonna do one of these um, just because I don't wanna waste people's time. Um, but we're gonna say, some light gear sticker. Uh, we yes, sticker. Orange. It is orange gear yellow center. And what does it say? It just says. Oh, it says spring twenty sixteen. Spring twenty sixteen. So all this information will already hopefully be in the um. Database, and as you can see on the far right, we can change what this could possibly. Obviously, this is a string. This is absolutely a string. Oops. Let me add a new field. Um, yeah. Okay. Add a new field. Great. So, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna limit this just because this will take some time. And I wonder, actually, can I just paste? I don't think it's gonna let me paste. Yeah, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. All right. Um, let me go back and pull what I have. Let's see. Let's do um, amount and event amount. Let's say I have one. Let's change this to a integer because I will never. <laughs> Is there a smaller one than that? So that's another thing. When you're working with hardware, um, you actually want to use the smallest size you can um, because you often have size limitations. In our case, we don't have size limitations unless we want to like pay for things. Um, but generally, you should use the most accurate aspect to it. So if you were, say, a company, you probably want a six, an N64 or something like that. But as an individual, N32 is almost too much still. If they had like an int, you know, like a U8 would be an unsigned integer um, of like eight, eight bits would be nice. And that's often found in hardware. So there are some databases that let you do that, but not all. Anyway, let's add one more. And what were we doing? We were doing, um, let's do owner actually. So it might be an event that owns it. It might be a company that owns it. And of course we're gonna type in major league hacking. And I can't put the TM there, but now I can do it. I'll do it in my heart. Um, I don't know, I always hate that it auto sizes because it makes me think that there's like spaces when there's not. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and insert the document. Um, there's different ways you can do this. So this was by adding a manual field. You can switch over and you can make it a, a JSON object of sorts. I wonder if it will, there we go. Okay, so I just formatted it by clicking the, bo the button on the right. But yeah, so this ID is automatically created for us. If we wanted to, we could make our own ID and that's fine, but for the sake of Simplicity, it's not worth it. So we have our alt text, we have the amount, we have the owner. Um, we'll leave it at that for now. So we'll go ahead and hit insert. And we will already have our first um, data piece. What we don't have, of course, is URL. We haven't gotten there yet. Come on. Refresh. Oh, that's because I didn't scroll down. My bad. Cool. So we have our first document, which is this entry. And now, let's see. Where's the bag I had? There's too many bags. Somebody said demo stickers actually. So there's, there's, here's the bag. What else we got? 
Oh, that's GitHub stickers. I mean, nothing wrong with that. I love GitHub stickers. Um, ooh, sunny stickers. Got plenty of those. Company stickers, miscellaneous. Where's my... Oh, duh. Okay. But can I find the gear quickly? Probably not. And all you hear is rustling from my side. Um, that's sunny stuff. Give me the gear. Nope. Ah, here it is. Alrighty. And um, we'll stop sharing for just a tad. I forget where my camera is, but here is the MLH gear that I'm referring to. And I can show you the nice photo I took of it. Um, along with a couple others. So we have the fun part now. Share. Add to screen. I have learned my lesson. Third time, third time. All right. So that's our nice product photo. And as you can see, I got plenty more. Don't these look nice? They're like really nice product photos. I literally found black cardboard in my house so I could take nice photos. Um, so we'll do a little bit of MLH history lesson. Um, I have been involved, or at least have been in the hackathon circuit since 2016. Um, so you have the MLH gear from spring. We have the new season, 2017. We have, oh, I, I should zoom in a bit actually. Now that I have stickers all over my laptop, it's really hard to find stuff. Oh, it won't, oh shoot. Can y'all see actually? Cause I won't be able, oh yeah, yeah. All right, then we have the 2019. I actually also have somewhere in here because I took it out the other day. Uh, this is Frankie. Where is, where is Crypto Chameleon? Oh, that's Ellie the Elephant. Okay, well, I have stickers all over my laptop now, so let me go ahead and, and keep going. Um, so we have Rubber Ducky from 2020. We have Ellie from 2021. Frankie from 2022, Jean from last year, um, Shinies, there was a big thing about holographics at the height of COVID, um, and just because they were introduced prior to COVID, but super neat, so much so that my Sunhacks team went on and made some of their own holographic stickers. Let me double check chat really quick. Cool. The fun part, you've made it to the end, the demo sticker. My favorite, Ellie's so cute. <laughs> it's just, I love her little costume. I actually really like this ducky too. Like, it's just the grayscale, like metal, just, it's cute. I, I love the designs. Our classic MLH sticker. And of course, the hardware hippo for this year. Um, I'm really curious what the 2025 mascot is. I really hope it's cute. I mean, they're always cute, so like, no biggie there. And then we have Death Post, um, which I've certainly collected a lot of stickers from. A perfectly pristine, uncurled MLH Hardware Lab sticker, um, probably because it's been in the bag for so long. And then we have my event. So we commission local artists to do um, our stickers for like our mascot stickers, but we'll also do internally um, some custom stickers. You know, once we try to do it every year, but we don't always have time. So we have Sunny, our mascot. This was during our COVID year. This was pre-COVID. Um, this was another different artist, um, again, local. And a, I think this was one of our local team artists, actually. So this was before we had the money to actually commission local artists to do our mascot. Um, we got some more, sun hacks, classic. Can't go wrong with that. This is actually transparent. So you'll get like a nice um, like outline of things. The background of, of this is not white. It is transparent. Never really took off with a lot of people. And then the OG, the pre-Sun Hacks, the Desert Hacks mascot. Um, this was before Sun Hacks, my event. And then we have some more Sun Hacks things like our Game Boy when we went retro. It was such a good year. We had so many cute, cute stickers. And then um, also our holographic sticker. We really went ham on it. <laughs> it came out so good. This was also from our retro year. Um, we have another local artist. Um, that was also from then our podcast slash uh, virtual year for COVID. 
um, the pre-COVID years. And then this is also transparent um, as well. And Frankie, holographic Frankie, most importantly. And then Ellie. I think this is a normal crypto chameleon. Um, and the normal rubber ducky. And then a big version of dead post. Okay, so that's all the stickers that I had scanned in. We're only going to, again, for, right? The, the person who made it um, knows their stuff. Let's see. So there is the one sticker that I've made. And this was actually not for an MLH event, but for a hackathon that I helped to run for my lab. Um, and it has a cute little cacti, and I'm just gonna show it right here in the screen. Little bitty. Let's see. My camera is just auto adjusting in the worst way. There we go. Yeah, cool. Very tiny, um, just cause I didn't, I didn't wanna, anyway. Cool, so we're only gonna download like one of those just for the given the proof of concept to prove we can upload an image to a bucket. We can investigate it a little bit as far as the metadata, get that URL, check back with our checklist and then um, wrap up for some happy fun sticker time <laughs> because again, I don't have a desktop. Um, which of the MLH or Sunhack stickers should I upload? Actually, there's no question. Always Ellie, always Ellie. Let's go ahead and download this. So when I download this, this is going to be massive. Um, and so as far as mass downloads go, um, the, the, I need to clear all the stickers off my desk. <laughs> I made mistakes. Uh, hang on a sec while I clear my desk. Oh, goodness. I, I've made mistakes. The, the pile, um, for context that I'm shutting off. That's one of the piles I'm collecting the second one right now. I'm trying not to mess with my computer. Another pile. I have way too many MLH. Oh my God, I missed it. We have an old school Twilio pizza. Um, I think they've gone, it's not like that it's gone through a redesign. It's just with the reprinting, they're a tad different, it feels like, but maybe I'm just crazy. All right, now it's just the, the few that are still on my desk. Okay. Okay, I can, I can do it again. Jeez. All right, um, so I downloaded it. And so the thing is, the photo is enormous. It, it is, it, that, that's the reality. The hardware lab sticker again. I think it was at the end. No, it wasn't. There it is. Here's the image hardware sticker while I chat. Um, yeah, so we've only downloaded one just because again, proof of concept. Um, there's a couple ways you can actually downsize an image. Um, so there's image magic, if you are familiar with Linux commands, um, where you can downsize like just in batches images. You can change the percentage, change the pixel, the like width and height, all sorts of things. That's a very programmatic process. You make a shell script or you, or not even that, you don't even have to write a shell script. Um, you just run the, the terminal command. But if you're not on Linux, things get a little, or not on Mac really, things get a little harder. Um, at that point, you can go ahead and Google, but be mindful to, again, clear the metadata from the photo. And there are different ways to do that. I'm not gonna get into that, but um, for the case of things, I just Google and just say image reducer, image downsize, like online. Um, be of course careful on the internet, um, but I just will, in the case of this, because it is so big, I'm probably gonna reduce it by 75%, um, which hopefully should put it in the low kilobytes as far as size goes, because it's definitely in the megabytes uh, size range. And so I'm going to do that off screen um, while y'all enjoy the hardware sticker. Downsize online, because I only have the one photo. I just, I don't want you seeing my files right now because I don't know what I've downloaded. I mean, it's all images when I was testing stuff, but I'm just like, there are, PhD documents that I'm working on that I'm like, no one needs to see that. No one needs to see that. No one needs to see how many papers I've downloaded in the last two weeks. Uh, okay, so it is three megabytes. And again, I'm not sharing that on purpose. I, I am aware. <laughs> and I am making the image 75% smaller um, with 
the intent being that um, it'll still be good enough for a website, a mobile app, etc. But it will be just a tad annoying. Um, and so let's go ahead and save the image. Hopefully it is significantly smaller. Yeah, so we went from three megabytes to a 75% downscale to being 42 kilobytes. Magical, so much smaller. Gonna take up so much less space because I think you get five gigs for free on S3. And I really don't wanna go over that because I have a lot of stickers. So reality is I am actually probably going to downsize them even more depending on how many pictures I end up taking. But the other question, the other thing I have to be concerned about is the storage on my Google Photos because it's not free. So I may not do the whole thing. I would hope to bypass it or maybe I make a pipeline or something to um, take the photo on my phone, upload it to my app, run it through a downsizer, then upload to the S3 bucket somehow. Um, but I've downloaded it. Let's go and um, double check chat. It's okay. The hardware lab sticker is my favorite because I love hardware and it just makes me happy to see that there's support for that. I love physical projects, um, especially when they're doing things with like Arduino, Raspi. Like there's so many more. Like Arduino is a great place to get started, and so is the Raspi. But um, there's like more microcontrollers out there, like the PIX series from Microchip. There is, um, oh my God, what else is there? I, in in my, my closet, there are a number of various um, microcontrollers that I've collected over the years. There's also the Microbit, which allows you to use Python. That one's a pretty friendly hardware um, thing. As far as the pipeline, that is a good question. Um, so ideally, if I had made a web app, mobile app, et cetera, like I said in this, we would have some way of accessing the camera on a phone. Um, so again, that's all permission space. That's very web app or like mobile app focus where it says like, give me permission to your camera to take photos um, that I would be able to take the photo. What I could do is send it to say another S3 cluster where I'm running a shell, like a S3 bucket where maybe I have a shell script that I want it to run or that I have um, an API hosted on a mini server or something like a droplet um, that takes in the request, takes the image, does the processing. Because um, you can call, like Python has um, image downsizers because a lot of people use that for computer vision. Um, I will not do MATLAB, but that's probably a possibility because you can work with, because um, you're working with matrices. Images are matrices. Um, there's the big secret behind the curtain, but MATLAB could technically do one. Um, and there are probably more out there, like C and C++ probably have a downsizing image library because again, they work with such low level, like things are very easy to do. Um, but I might also just, there might be an API out there that someone's already made that already does it. There's, a, I, I would definitely research um, what I would probably do, but tentatively I would say something like, um, get an image from the web app, send an API request to either another API that I, like a server that I have running the script that says upon receipt, um, do the downsizing and then send it to a further thing. This is great for obfuscation of your, your data. So you might be able to send images and they would just be downsizing it. Um, potentially go through like a process to make sure like the image is safe, et cetera. Um, and then moving on from there. But um, right off the bat, it's gonna be a manual process for now. You could also write something on the web or mobile app that does it in the front end, which I would not recommend. It's kind of against the MVC model, which is model view controller. Generally, and in, in general, when you're doing front end work, you don't want to have processes happening in the front end because it makes the front end suffer as a result. The more processing dedicated to something that should be a back end process, something else will fail as a, as a result. So would not recommend doing front end downsizing. Would recommend finding a different way. Um, usually if you have a server hosted, you might be actually able to run it on the server, but depending on how many images someone might be sending at a time, thinking across scalability, which is another thing you might think of with project um, planning, not just accessibility, but scalability, um, being that if if it was just one person, easy peasy, totally could do front end downsampling, downsizing, um, could do server end side back, uh, downsizing. But if you think on the magnitude larger of say like a thousand people all at the same time, um, 
that gets harder. And so you might say, well, I want it to be on a separate server instead because that's specific to that. Um, and then do load balancing and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that, that's where my mind goes when I think of like how I would do that. Um, but let's go ahead and stop sharing that. I'm gonna drag you all back to S3 so we can upload that new downsized image, investigate it a little bit, and then we will wrap up with stickers. Um, so again, thank you for the patience. I know that we are not doing a very technical job today. And that's literally just because my desktop died. So all of my prep is there. All of the extra stuff and code we would have done is there. And uh, yep, not what I expected to happen. No one expects uh, that to happen. But let me go ahead and share that tab. And stickers. Stickers. And let me go and add this to StreamYard. I have great line medicine. Um, I personally cannot answer that, but generally I think you have to do a code sample. And so that that's what's used. Um, I don't have many open source contributions personally, but I also don't, I can't do the fellowship. I'm a coach and a couple other things. So, uh, uh, but um, would definitely say post in Discord, there's uh, fellowship questions and that would be your best bet. Um, Way was on stream, he might have dipped, which fair, but I still definitely think you should ask on Discord um, just because then if the question has already be, been asked, somebody can link you to it or somebody can answer or again, MLH will see it and I'll, they'll answer. Um, but right, last stage, we're gonna upload it. Oh, just, just drag and just drag and drop. Okay, we're gonna just drag and drop. Cool. All right. I actually haven't done this process. <laughs> this is also like, hmm, what happens? How do I break it? What do I do? Um, okay, so I guess I can add multiple files, yada, yada. We're sending it to that. Details, yes, I would like to know what's going on. So this is how I actually go about learning things. And so maybe this is something valuable for you. If you are not familiar with things, if you're working with something, I am extremely cautious when I am working with something that may charge me at any given time. If I'm not being charged, I'm like, break it, do whatever. And yeah, so I could be charged. So I'm reading the directions, I'm reading the instructions. Um, we don't have versioning. We're not gonna have that issue. We have default encryption. Well, okay, so this is just a repeat of stuff. Um, and I'm not worried about overwriting or deleting objects because it's going to be fairly static. So not too big an issue. Permissions, uh, we didn't enable anything. So there's nothing we can do. Properties. This I think is just yeah we're we're doing the standard low lowest lowest cost. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So we don't need to read anything there. I think we're good. Um. Upload succeeded. View details below. There is no details to be seen. Close. Cool. So we now have whenever it loads our object. I wonder what it will tell us or if it will just show the image. Uh -huh. um, cool, so we have a resource name, we have tag. So something we could do is we could do the tag. We have a URL. Can I? Ah, okay. So I was curious, I opened it in incognito because I wanted to see like, if I'm not logged in, can I see this? The answer is no, <laughs> makes makes sense. Um, so I guess as, as I might work with something, this is where I would get into talking about um, Amazon or at least AWS is S3, has an SDK that you can use where you can access buckets. You can get a bucket, you can, let me go ahead and stop sharing. Um, right, so, with the SDK, you can get a bucket, list the objects in a bucket. Um, you could download, so those are the, the guest requests, get requests, and you can also add things if you have permissions to the bucket. Um, so lots of different things you can do at that, this point. Um, the, this is the end again. I would have gone into the SDK, would have like set up an environment and everything. Laptop is not set up for that, so can't do that. Um, 
but ideally you might use your preferred language, um, access the bucket. AWS has a ton of tutorials actually um, out there. That's what I was looking through to make sure I could prep this, where I was looking at AWS's examples on GitHub, seeing how they, and they have it in all the different languages from JavaScript to Python, et cetera. Golang and, and, and um, Bash even. So there's lots of opportunities for you to um, just try new things with AWS and their SDK. But um, sticker time. You, you've sat through enough. Somebody said stickers, the demo stickers, right? Is it demo stickers? Uh, demo stickers. OK, so here's the bag of demo stickers that I've collected. It is uh, quite a few. And so some of the demo stickers are also not demo stickers. They're like just hexagons um, because my event also really likes to do hexagons because we love giving people ways to decorate their laptop. And some of these I've gotten through sticker exchange. So, and then some of these are MLH's um, Global Hack Weeks and various other events that have been hosted over time. So um, if you got a chance to go to HackCon because you're organizing, you will get a demo sticker for that. Um, so I have a couple of HackCon stickers. Here's some Global Hack Weeks from the past. Um, all the different fruits. Um, I don't think I went to this one. More HackCon. Um, Datadog made hexagons. That's a company one. Um, once upon a time ago, we had local hack days. Um, they, now they've become Global Hack Weeks. We have the LEI demo sticker. Um, Another local hack day sticker. Um, ah, <laughs> maybe not. Um, this is a really cool one. Uh, hack UTD has some neat designs. This is, I don't remember when this is from, but I didn't get to go to that. Sun hacks. I don't think the light's gonna show how orange it is. Nope. Um, also, sun hacks. This is, I love this one the like tens and tens of color. My camera is of course not doing a good job, but it is what it is. We, we do our best. Um, the MLH principles, kind of. Um, once upon a time, our local hack days were learn, share, and build. Holographic sun hack stickers. I'm actually, I really love those. I love all the sun hack stuff. We, my team does great stuff. Um, Frankie. Can't go wrong with Frankie. Again, my camera's not doing these justice, but the colors are great on them. What else do I got? Let's see. More stacks. More Frankie. She's so cute. Uh, if you are a Texas person, I got a Rowdy Hex. Uh, howdy, howdy. Let's get Rowdy. More Frankie. Gee. I know I'm rolling through these pretty quickly. I, I don't want to keep people longer. I know we didn't. Ooh, ooh. A uh, Hack Arizona. Um, let's see what else we got. This is M Hacks. Very simple, very nice though, very classy. Um, I think this is Grizzly Hacks. I might be wrong on that, in which case I'm, I am sorry if I'm wrong. Um, some of these I haven't gone to, like I said, I've gotten them at sticker exchanges. I think this is Tamu Hack. You oughta, Canada. Um, I don't know where I'm skipping a bunch. Um, let's see what else we got. I think, ooh, this is, this is Pickaxe, I'm pretty sure. I hope it is. I'd be really concerned if I was wrong there. I should know it. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looking for some good ones. Let's see. I mean, they're all good, but I'm trying to like be strategic. You know, gotta gotta show off my collection. Ooh. Ooh. From my Hacklahomies out there, Hacklahoma. They're so cute. I love their team. Um, their design. Okay, I low key I stalk their Instagram <laughs> um, because they just have such good design. It just it makes me happy. 
Um, Sparta Hack. I think if you are in the US, Sparta Hack is coming up, so you should definitely attend. Um, I believe this is, let's see. Where's another good one? Ooh, um, Mad Hacks, Wisconsin. Um, uh, I have been attending Hackathon since 2016. Um, and so that's when I first got introduced to the MLH community. And I have been a part of it ever since. Uh, let's see, I'm still looking to see if there's any more unique ones. Ooh, NW Hacks. I always wanted to go to this. There are some that I haven't done yet. This is just cool. Look at that. Look at this. I mean, again, my camera is is piss poor. Um, let's see any other ones. Uh, all right. Um, we got the last stack. Are there any new cool ones I haven't shown? Because I have some duplicates. Um, ooh. Retro Sun Hacks demo sticker. I think we made these though. There's not the demo sticker from the air. We just, we've made hexagons. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So that's all the demo stickers. Or at least the hexagons that I have. We are at the hour and a half mark. So we will start wrapping up. Any other sticker requests I have? Companies and I think larger hackathon stickers. Oh god, the pile. <laughs> uh, this was a mistake. Now I have to clean up. But a fun way to spend a Monday morning that uh, went south pretty quickly. Nothing like going through stickers for anxiety relief. Um, again, not all our demo stickers. Um, there are various hexagons from just what my team has made and what others have made just because the hexagon is such a popular design. So if you ever run your own hackathon, you know, make some hackathons or make some hexagons. Hexagon, hackathon, and the same thing. Um, all right. And I'm losing my headphones. This is why I don't like wearing them. All right. Um, I think at that point, if nobody, well, actually, if there's any questions, um, would love to answer any. I know we were very, very conceptual today and very, very low, low tech um, for, again, apologetic reasons. My my monitors weren't turning on when I woke up this morning. Um, get to troubleshoot that today. But um, if there's any questions, I, I'd love to have them. If not, um, enjoy the rest of your Monday. And definitely remember to check out the closing ceremony in a bit. And then as far as the um, event, uh, what's it called? As far as checking for the event, um, definitely check out, like take a screenshot that you were here and um, just use it as proof because hopefully when it, when it goes through, you can still claim it um, and whatnot. It is not because I don't want to put the stickers uh, down. I, um, I collect them and I never put them on, but there are people that I know who do have like fully covered like lids. It's really cool. Um, the only reason I put stickers on my laptop was to cover the fact that when I was a TA, one of my students dropped a very, very heavy metal thing with a sharp corner on my, my laptop. And so they, uh, I needed to cover that or else I would have gone insane. Um, so the only stickers are covering damage that were not my fault. Um, yeah. Oh, good. The link is fixed. So um, definitely go ahead and check in if you haven't already. Ah, yes. Thank you. I said we would come back to this. Um, so your question was, I'm scrolling up. Hang on. Uh, da, da, da. Right, so I have a guitar. Um, it is a lefty guitar, um, but I it's an acoustic. I really like it. Um, generally, when you're just getting started out, no need to go for the most expensive thing. Go for something that feels comfortable. Um, if you, I think in the US, there is Guitar Center, and um, those are actually pretty helpful for getting started. It's not ideal, but it works. Um, or you could get like a used one online, but you generally want something that's there's like adult sizes and kid sizes and so depending on where you land in that um choose the appropriate one but as far as tips for learning i would generally recommend scales because you need to build calluses on your fingers um because pushing on those guitar strings for so long hurts by doing scales you're training your fingers to be able to do these things 
because eventually you need to be able to hold chords that end up with your hand like this or like really far depending on if it's like a bar chord because sometimes you have to be able to hold your bar chord across your whole finger um so depending on like i, I would definitely stay stage your work practice like 20 minutes a day while you're building your calluses it's gonna hurt um, but once you get those calluses, then you can really do stuff. Um, but you'll also have to build calluses, like I said, on the inside of your fingers, especially again, when you're doing bar chords. Um, and then just after like you've, you've figured out how to do like scales and chords, um, then you probably want to go into things like strumming. And so there's different strumming and I'm using different hands because this is how I remember. Cause I'm like, I play guitar. So, um, when you're strumming, um, being good with tempos is, is helpful as a start, but if you're not, I'd recommend looking into like strumming patterns, um, which is like if you have a four beat song, you know, four out of four, it's, you know, strum down one, two, three, four, and it's just the same motion going down, but you can also go up. And so there are strum patterns, so like down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. So as you practice it, it'll become more natural. And it'll also help with tempo sometimes, but you're also, again, changing chords depending on where you are in the guitar. Um, you might even be playing um, where if you decide you don't want to use sheet music, um, I both read sheet music and tab. Tabs are helpful when you're figuring out finger placement for when you're fingering melodies, um, because that's not strum patterns where it's you're using your whole hand or a pick um, like in a, in a specific motion. It's that you're finger picking different strings as well as putting your other hand on different frets. Um, I think, yeah, that's a that's a good five minute run through <laughs> of like best tips. Yeah, it's gonna hurt at first as you build calluses. Um, again, ten minutes a day, twenty minutes a day while you're you're getting used to it. I uh, I take long breaks, so I have to rebuild my calluses regularly um, because I get so busy I forget to practice and or I just don't have time. Um, or when I'm like, oh cool, it's practice time. It's like ten p.m. and I'm like, eh. Um, I, my family is musical, so I, guitar is part of my family, piano is part of my family, um, wind instruments, uh, I have not gotten into, but I'd like to, percussion as well, I haven't gotten into, but I'd like to, um, like, those are next on my, on my list after the electric guitar and bass, um, but I, I learned it from a mix of, like, there were songs that I wanted to play, and there were also, um, like, classes at my high school. Um, there are community college classes. There's a lot of different places you could learn. I never took lessons on guitar because like my dad knew. So I just bothered him like, hey, play this thing for me so I can like, because he's righty, I'm lefty. I mirror him when I'm learning. And so I'm just sitting there like, okay, you did this finger and yeah. Um, so I learned it from a mix of things. Uh, no because I get impatient. No, I just practice for myself. I Music is, is for me. I, um, I don't need to record or post anywhere because it's not, I don't do anything. I just play for me. Um, so, I mean, with the electric guitar, my hope is to play a, more, a wider range of songs and like really understand how an amp works um, because I'm one of those not like nerds who I'm like, okay, I have an amp. like what if I want to do this? Or like, what if I want to make my own pedal, um, which is something I want to do. Or getting into electric, I um, there's pedals, there's loopers, there's all sorts of different things you can do to change the sound of the guitar on top of the amp. And so I'm like, okay, once I get an amp, then I can get a pedal or a looper or both, depending on like the cost, because they're expensive. And then I'm like, but I also do hardware. So what if I make one? Um, which is a recurring issue with most of my hobbies where I go, a little too deep into the details, um, which I did with keyboards. I uh, I am working my way toward making a PCB for a keyboard myself instead of getting like a pre-made PCB um, for like switches and stuff. So, um, so we're at the forty-five, um, and I think we're gonna pretty much wrap up here again. Thanks for the patience for hanging around. I'm glad you got to see stickers. I'm um, glad I got to show them off. I am sorry that it was definitely a lower quality stream than usual, but again, technical difficulties, like just ha you just got to roll through and do the best you can. Um, but yeah, um, any technical questions? If not, um, I'm probably going to give it like a minute so that way people can type. But otherwise, um, happy Monday and stay around for closing ceremony, which is happening soon. And have a good rest of your day. Give it a minute. 
I know it takes a few seconds. Yeah, that was uh, it's a heavy bag. Bags. Bags. Looking at the sticker bags I have around, I'm like, oh, I, I need to catalog these. <laughs> All right. I think with that, then it is time to end the stream. Again, thanks so much for joining. Uh, and again, appreciate the patience. Um, hopefully my computer will be up and running by next Global Hack Week. Um, yeah. Cool. We'll definitely check out Closing Ceremony. Thanks for coming. Check out that event link if you haven't checked in already. And have a good one.